when I was asked a few days ago to, if I could be ready to maybe bring the word and I was, oh yeah, yeah, I'll be doing it. Readily, because I want to be a servant, want to help or whatever, but did not know in the process of time that he was going to be teaching me the topic they're going to bring forth of you tonight because me, if you don't really know me or whatever, I like to be prepared. I like to have everything, all my ducks in a row. It's got to happen this way, this way, this way, this way, and no other way because I've already figured out from the beginning to the end different little ways how things can go. So I'm very concise when it comes to things. But in the process of this time, he was teaching me the topic that I'm going to bring forth you tonight or whatever. All right. And my topic is exercising patience while waiting on God. Exercising patience while waiting on God. And in this time, I'm going to tell you, I found out something about myself. Sister Pops don't like to wait. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I don't like to wait. Do you have anybody else? Come on. Come on. I'm going to be real. I like things done. I don't want it done then. I don't want it done yesterday. I don't want it done right now. When I'm walking down the hall and I'm seeing somebody who's not quite in uniform, I'm like, get it right. I'll go home. I don't mean, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. No. Now, I'll go home. I mean that. I don't like to wait. I'm like the devil or devil. I don't play. I want it done then. Yeah. You're walking down, I'm walking down the hall and somebody got the nails too long or whatever. Take them off. I'm like, yes, pop them nails. I paid $45. Well, well, you paid for it. If I was too much, I'm sorry. You got, they gotta go. They gotta go. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't tolerate no stuff like that. Yeah. So, exercising patience while waiting on God. Yeah. All right. Let's get a couple of definitions. All right. Patience. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry, upset. An ability or willingness to suppress restlessness or annoyance when confronted with delay. Okay? Let that sink in a minute. Meaning, while you're waiting, you shouldn't get out of your character. Yeah. While you're waiting, you shouldn't be perturbed or disturbed or moved or worried or in that proverbial rocking chair with the what ifs going on or whatever. A Christian shouldn't be that way because you know why? We got the Holy Ghost. We got the God's Word. You know, He said He's going to do it. It's going to come to pass. He'd probably tell you when He was going to do it, but you can rest assured He's going to do it. Yeah. He just don't tell you when He's going to do it. Yeah, we just have to sit and wait and be patient while He's doing it. So we have to exercise patience while we're waiting on God. Okay? Waiting. The action of staying where you are or where you are or uh, one. Staying there or delaying action until a particular time or something else happens. Mm -hmm. Staying where you are or remaining where you are while you're waiting on something to happen. And while you're waiting, I mean that you're still doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're still fasting, you're still praying, you're still reading your word, you're still coming to church when you're supposed to come to church, you're still coming to Bible study when you're supposed to come to Bible study or whatever, meaning that's your waiting. That's your waiting. But if you're not doing that, then what are you doing? In that proverbial walking chair, sitting there singing the what ifs, what if this, what if that, or whatever. I've been there, I've done it. I'm guilty of it. And half the time, the things I think that may happen, but I fought them through, thinking that they knew it, but they don't. But that's what the devil wants you to do. But that's not how God made us to be, okay? It also means to be aware through all of your senses of what is occurring around you, discerning the right time to do the next thing. Discerning the right time to do the next thing. The next thing. Now, you... All that comes about your problem, your situation, your circumstance, or whatever, and you try to make a decision, you're going to make the wrong, the wrong decision. I guarantee it. Because you, you're making a decision out of your emotions, out of something that you want to have that want, you want like that popcorn minute or whatever. No, that's not the time to make a decision like that. You have to think things through. you got to do it over. 
let it cook a little bit, put it in that crock pot and let it stew for a little while. And then you try to make a decision on what you gotta do on your yeah. next move. But if you, it comes about with everything that's looking around you, everything that's going on around you or whatever, you're gonna make the wrong decision at the wrong time. That's right. And I'm gonna tell you something, when you do that, God is not obligated to help you. When you make those wrong decisions, because you didn't wait on him, because you stepped out of his will, and you don't want to be that way, saints. Stay in his will, obey him, and just you just wait. All right. How many of you were here tonight of those on the sound of my voice? Love to wait. Like I said, I don't. Let's just talk about it. How many of y'all love to wait on whatever? And I'm gonna tell you. Just for me, it depends on what I'm waiting for. Every year, me and my husband we get together, and uh, in the springtime, we go out to the big box stores and we buy. Um, I like to plant roses and uh, caladiums or whatever and get bulbs and things. I like to plant them in the yard and, and I'm telling him where I want them. I'm sitting there watching him dig a hole and he puts the shrubbery down or the bulbs down or whatever. Then he packs it up with dirt and he waters it and he puts the miracle grow on it or whatever. I love doing that yeah. and I don't mind waiting on that because you know why? In the summertime, when the, when the flowers begin to bud, I've got the best looking flowers on the block. Come on, come on. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. I waited mm -hmm. on them. I waited on the seeds to grow. Yeah. I waited on the bulbs to grow. Yeah. I waited on the shrubbery to grow. I, even though you got the pictures on, on the plants to tell you what it's going to look like, it don't look like then. Yeah. But you got to wait on it. And eventually it will Amen. look right. like what the picture says. Yeah. Come on. Okay? But you gotta wait. That's right. So I can wait on that because I've I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've done that. Many, many I've been there 19 years. We've done it for 19 years every year. Yeah. Never fail. So hey, it, it comes like easy to me. Yeah. I don't mind. I'm ready. Okay, yeah. let's get ready. We're gonna plant this year. I'm on I'm on target for it. I'm ready for it. Because I've been through it. So I don't have to I don't have to be tried by that patient anymore because I understand it. That's right. I'm I've graduated from it. But then he throws something else at you and I'm like, oh Lord, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> But he was preparing me for when I was watching the Greek, watching my little trees grow. Yeah. He was preparing me then. Yeah. I've got a fruit orchard in my yard. got 10 trees, 10 fruit trees in my yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't start out that way. Yeah. I had to wait on them to yeah. grow and, and flourish. And now I, can, I enjoy the fruits of my labor. Yeah. It took time. But I waited. Yeah. So now I've got something I can stand on. Because I've been through it. I've graduated from it. I don't have to go through that anymore. I understand it. I've got it. You know what? I understand this now. But then you throw something else at you. You know why? He's taking you higher. He takes you from glory to glory to glory to glory. So each time these little tasks that you get thrown at you, they get a little harder. But it's only to make you better and not the worse, I promise you. The road to victory is through tests and trials. Nobody gets a free pass. He never promised you a rose garden. He never promised you that every road you take is gonna be easy. He never said that you'll never have a problem, you never have an issue, you never have a circumstance. He wouldn't be God if it would if it's like that. Because you know why? It'd be easy to serve him. We would, you know, hey, if everything was all hunky dory, we wouldn't have an issue with nothing. That's right. It'd be this house would be packed out. Yes. Because the road is easy. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. That's not how God wants us. Amen. That's right. That's not how He wants us. Amen. He wants you to do willingly, yeah. not things from His hand, but His face. Yes. We get so caught up in seeking God's hand and what he can do for us and the blessing this or the blessing that or whatever. But we forget about seeking God's face. We forget about God. It's all about the blessing here at that, at that, at that point. And that's the wrong attitude to have when you're waiting on God. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Sister Jones, if you don't mind, would you read for me, please? Yes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. 
Say that again. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Okay. A time to be born and a time to die. Uh -huh. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit have he that worketh in that wherein he labored? Amen. Amen. She just gave you 14 different parables or um, combinations of things that happen in life. Yeah. If you look at it that way. A time to do this, a time to do that, or whatever. If you do things ahead of time, you're on your own. Amen. You, you're being God then, really. You're in rebellion. Mm -hmm. When you're doing things on your own, when you don't wait on God. It's idolatry, it's, it's witchcraft, you're in rebellion or whatever. God don't like it when you get ahead of him. Amen. No. Amen. Stay in your lane, wait on God. I know, I know. We get to a point where when we get tired of waiting, we want things done now. Patiently waiting is easier said than done. It is. It's the truth. We like to take matters in our own hands. We want things done, we want them done now. We don't want a minute too late, we want them done now. Time don't wait for nobody. We got, hey, we got to get it done. Got to get it done now. What's the hurry? What's your hurry? Slow it down a little bit. Wait on God. And when he puts his hand in it, it's going to be done perfectly. And it's not going to be rushed. There's not going to be any burden on it. And you know what? The work will be easy when we do get it. Because you know why? You waited on him. He's worked out all the kinks for you. He's already shown you how things are supposed to work or whatever. He's showing you how to do things or whatever. So I mean, wait on him. Yeah. But wait on him. And while you're waiting for things that you've been you prayed for and you're hoping for or whatever, it's going to test your faith in God. It's going to test your faith. It tested Abraham. Amen, that's right. It tested the uh, the hall of faith in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Amen, that's right. And all of them, enough, very, very many of them even received the promise. Mm -hmm. But they waited. They patiently endured. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 22. I want to read that about Abraham. Start at verse 1, if you will. And it came to pass. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, not that. 21. Genesis 21, I'm sorry. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Amen. I'm worried there. It says, For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Now that set time happened 25 years before we after the Lord had spoken the word to Abraham and Sarah. 25 years. 25 years of waiting. 
Yes. 25 years. 25 years of waiting from the word that he had spoken to Abraham until the time that she conceived was 25 years. Yes. How many of you been praying for 25 years for something? Mm -hmm. Are you still waiting on it or has it happened to you yet or did you not so do it so patiently? I can be honest, I've been praying for something. I, I haven't been patient about it. I haven't. But I'm still waiting. Yeah. I'm still here. Still breathing. Still living. Amen. Still saved. Still yeah. sanctified. Still Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. Amen. I've got Jesus on my mind. I'm <laughs> running for my life. Yeah. Come on I'm running for my life. Amen. Everybody else should be. You can't even in the even even right now. That's waiting. When you're running for your life, you wait. Yeah. Look at how many people who have dropped out of the way in the waiting. Who have gone back in the way. They didn't persevere to the end because they got tired of waiting. Look at the ten virgins. Five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. Five of them took all what they lamp, five of them didn't have enough oil in their lamps. They got weary in the waiting. They all heard the call, but they got their weary in the waiting. They dropped things off. They left things off or whatever. You can't do that. You got to keep running. Keep going. No matter what. Keep persevering. No matter what. Keep your patience while you're waiting. Keep your wits about you while you're waiting. While you're waiting, the devil has a way of throwing little darts at you, little seeds of doubt. And they start settling your mind or your spirit or whatever. For instance, this is proverbial what ifs. What if I fail? What if I lose my job? What if I lose my home? What if I lose my car? What if I lose my job? Or what if I cannot find another job? What if my spouse leaves me? What if well, the doctor told me I got cancer? What if I die? What if I don't have enough money on my last check that I'm getting? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? You sit there and you worry about all these what ifs or whatever. You let these little seeds of doubt settle into your mind. And then you start to dwell on them. And you know what seeds do? They grow and they fester and they take over. Then they say, you know, you got, you find yourself focusing on your problem and not the problem solver. The one who can help you out of your situation. So what do you do? You change your focus. That's right. Change your focus. And I'm telling you, it's easy to say we trust in God. It's easy to say we can do this. Or, oh, I wouldn't, oh, Sister Buddy may go up there right now. God help him. I don't know what I'll do if I were her. I'll be doing this right here if I were her. You don't know what you're going to do to you in that situation. Right. Until you're in that situation. Right. It's easy to say we trust God, but how do we really trust and respond to Him in delays and frustrations and difficult situations? How do you really respond when you're in those situations? How do you truly respond when you find yourself in those situations? When you actively choose to patiently wait on God, do you realize that we're honoring Him? We're honoring God when we that. Not only that, we encourage others to do the same. Yes. Because you know what? Believe it or not, people are watching you. Yes. People are watching you. And I didn't realize until, until the day one of my employees said, you come off as somebody who's stern and hard, but you really aren't. You really aren't that way. And I said, well, thank you. Thank you. She said, you, you, it's like you don't care, but you do care. You show us that you care about. I said, I do care about y'all, I do. And she said, thank you. It's fine. That made me feel so good. Because right. I didn't realize they were watching me that way. Yeah. But they do. Mm -hmm. They do. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a light to them. I thank God for that. Yes. I thank God for that. So those who are lights on your job, maybe the only one. I'm the only one my whole business saved. The only one. I got a lot of them who say they are, but they're not. They ain't Holy Ghost. Well, they say they ain't Holy Ghost. How about that? Because I, I have to kind of get away from that a little bit. Is everybody saved? Everybody ain't filled. So when you when you lose your focus, or when you focus on your problems and situation, on what you what God has done or hasn't done, or what He hasn't done yet, or whatever, 
it makes you grumble and gripe and you become discontent, yeah. you become bitter, miserable, you pretty soon your behavior will start to affect those around you. People don't want to hang around you, your husband don't want to be with you. I mean, you just miserable. Misery love company. You just ooh, I you just don't want to be around somebody like that. Because you know what they're going through. But they're not being they're not patiently waiting. They're not enduring to the end. They're not doing it the right way. They got their eyes on the wrong source. Yeah. Put your eyes back on God and wait on Him. When I think of waiting, for me to best describe it to you, picture yourself in a restaurant and you're at a table and you got your menu and the waitress comes and she says, you know, hello, my name is so-and-so and, you know, how can I help you today? What would you like to have? Let's start off with a drink. And you say, well, I like some sweet tea. And you know what? She goes and brings you the sweet tea. All right. You say, would you like an appetizer or whatever? And you say, yeah, I like so-and-so. She goes, get your appetizer. She brings it to you. And then she says, you know what? How about the meal? What would you like to have for your meal? You say, well, I want like a, let's say steak with the baked potato and salad or whatever. Oh. She goes, she brings it back to you. What is she doing? She's waiting on you. So that's what we're supposed to be doing, saints. We're waiting, we're waiting on God. We're actively, we're occupying till it comes. Meaning you're still doing what he's called you to do. You haven't you have stumbled, you haven't faltered. She's, she's been a waitress. Yeah, she's waiting on you. She's doing those things that's required of her. So we have to do those things that's required of us as saints, the Holy Ghost feels saints. Come to church. Reading your Bible. Fasting. Praying. Paying your tithes. All of those things matter. You occupy until it comes. You waiting till you comes. You waiting to get your answer. You may have to dig a little deeper in your fasting life or your praying life. Maybe we pray a little longer. Yeah. Maybe read a little longer. It's okay. Yeah. But you're still occupied in the calm. You're waiting on your answer. You're waiting. That's waiting. You're not grumbling. You're not griping. You're not telling everybody you're big. Because sometimes when you're going through, you can't tell nobody. Come on now. Come like sometimes on now. you got to kind of keep to yourself, take it to your grave. Come on now. You know? Because I'm telling you, Amen, that's right. I'm 51 years old. Not everybody has your best interests at heart. Amen, that's right. If you don't learn anything else from me tonight, learn that. Yes. Not everybody has yes. your best interests. Yes. Not even your closest family members. Come I on, promise that's you right. they don't. Come on, that's right. Amen, that's right. Because people glory in people's downfall. Yes, they do. So some things you're going through or you find you're going through, keep it to yourself. That's right. Between you and God, and nobody will ever know. And if you keep it between you and God, I guarantee you, your enduring won't be as long as you think it will. Because you know what? You're doing things to please him. Yeah. You're, you're occupying till it comes. You're, you're making your, your ways of pleasing him. You're delighting yourself in the Lord when you're doing that. <coughs> that helps when you're doing that. Psalms 27 and 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen you. Strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. <coughs> Get Hebrews chapter 10 for me. Hebrews chapter 10, <coughs> verse 35 and 36 for me. <coughs> Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. <coughs> ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise they said you might receive the promise mm -hmm. but you might see it but when you're going to receive it after after what you after, the will of God. after you've done the will of God so what's the will of God come on now is it not coming to church fasting and praying reading your bible Coming to Bible study, paying your tithe, is that not doing the, is that not doing the will of God? Yes. Support your pastor and your and the pastor's wife there or what? Is that not doing the will of God? Coming in, maybe cleaning the church up, doing doing something, yes. mowing the lawn. I mean, is that not doing the will of the Lord? Right. So after you what patiently endure, you might receive the promise. That's right. 
after we have patiently endured. Not everybody patiently endures. That's right. And that's what we falter at. We don't patiently endure. They says, cast down away your confidence. Now, confidence means the belief or feeling that you can rely on someone or something. It's a feeling of certainty. You patiently require that you have confidence in God. So don't cast away your confidence in God. Don't cast away God. You know what? He's a sure thing. He's a sure thing. You can bank on him. You can count on him. Like you count on that pew you sitting on right now, it's gonna hold you up. <laughs> you can count on that. Am I right? Yes. When you go to the bank, if you look, if you go through the even the drive through they've got it plastered on the canisters there that this bank is um, supported or su supplied by the U.S. Uh, Congress with the Mint or whatever, and they say in the faith of the U.S. Mint. Mm -hmm. Faith of the U.S. Mint now. So it's really not a guarantee. It's just faith. Mm -hmm. They believe, they believe, they trust that this will go yeah, through, yeah. that the transactions are true or whatever. That's right. I want a maybe. I want a sure thing. And my sure thing is in the Word of God and God Himself. <clears throat> That's what I want. To patiently endure. I want to be with God no matter what. Patiently endure and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. When your money looks funny, what are you going to do? You're going to wait. When you don't know what to do, you're going to wait. When you don't know where to, where to turn, you wait. When you don't know what to do next, you wait. When that doctor gives you an unfair report, you wait. When he gives you, when you hear that word you don't want to hear, divorce or whatever, or cancer, or something big like that, you wait. If they tell you they're gonna downsize on the job, you wait. You wait. I'm telling you, it's not easy. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not easy, but it can be done. It can be done. Because he said he could. Because you know why? He says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. So he couldn't, if, you, if he couldn't keep you, could strengthen you, he wouldn't have put it in his word. So you can't tell me you can't wait. You can't. We just want to get in a hurry sometimes. And we can't do that. Can't do that. You got to let it stay a minute and let it stir a minute. I want to talk one more time about God's word. About in Hebrews, what are you saying? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And I'm going to end right there. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. <clears throat> but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When they diligently seek the Lord, you're fasting, you're praying, you're reading your word, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're diligently seeking the Lord. And God will reward you for that. But you got to diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Not his hand, his face. Not his hand, but his face. Him and him alone. And when you take your mind off your problems and off the situations, and you take your mind off those little fiery doors that they never want to throw at you or whatever, and you put your eyes on God, you'll find out, you know what? You got wings of eagles and you can lift up above your problem, above your situation. And you say, you know what, Lord? I could have did this a long time ago. I could have done this a long time ago. I could have done it this way or whatever. But that's it. You're still learning. So when you learn from your mistakes, that's how you grow. And you know what? You can help somebody else along the way. But you know what now you got? You got your testimony of how to patiently endure. Exercise of patience while waiting on God. 
I can't put it in any plan. How much more would he expect of us? We are trying and true, we're walking in the truth or whatever. We got the patient endure. Patient endure until he comes. Exercising patience while we're waiting on God. I don't know what y'all are waiting on or what you're waiting on him for or whatever, but I know my situation. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna move. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the circumstances do, they change or whatever. I'm gonna wait. If everything around me tell me to move, but the Lord told me to wait, I'm gonna wait. If everything around me said you need to move, you need to do this, you need to do this right now, I'm gonna wait. If there's a fire all around me and the Lord says you wait right there, I'm gonna wait right there. Got a test on a true story. Husband and wife in the house. And for some reason, the husband he jumps up and he takes his wife and she he starts to choke her. And he beats her. And he takes her to the bathroom and he runs a tub full of water. And he's got her in the water, got her head up on the water. And he's just knocking her out, just knocking her out in the water. And she's fighting it with all her might. She's fighting with all her might. And she heard a voice, she said, be still. That's all, be still. So she stopped fighting. She didn't move. You know what? He left her right just like that and walked on out the house. He thought she was dead. You know what? She got up. Hallelujah, she got up. Because you know why? She did what the Lord told her to do. She, she never heard that voice before in her life, but she obeyed it. And that's what you got to do. When you find those situations where you don't know what to do, you wait. <coughs> you wait. That happened to a lady that I met. I'm like, oh my God. Had she not obeyed, she'd be dead. Obey him while you're waiting. Obey him while you're waiting. That's part of your occupying till he comes. Obedience is better than your sacrifice. Because she it could have been a different story had she not obeyed that voice. And that woman is saved, sanctified, filled with logos right now. Thank you, Jesus. Because of a voice that she had never heard before. And that she knew enough to obey it. And it was a, a a loud voice. It was a still small voice. She said, "He said, be still." Mm. And she obeyed the voice. And she's alive today. She was alive today because she obeyed the voice. I haven't even heard the Lord tell you to do things and you didn't obey. Him. Because you're getting out of his will because you want things done when you want them done. Come or you now. want it done the way you want it done. Come or on things now. don't look the way you want it look. So you yeah. want to go put your hand in it. You yeah. want to go mess it up. Yes. Stop. Stop. Yes. Just stop. God makes everything beautiful in its time. Mm -hmm. In its time. Not our time. Come on now. It was my time. I'm done it yesterday. Yeah. It'd be done by now. But it wouldn't be right. It probably wouldn't even look as good. Had I waited. You gotta wait on some things. Last scripture, I promise it's my last scripture. Psalms chapter 1. And verse 3 for me. Uh-huh. And he shall be like a tree mm -hmm. planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit and his season. Mm -hmm. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's how you can look when you wait on God. You can be like a tree planted yes. by the river of living water. Yes, God. That's going to bring forth his fruit in his season. That's what you can look like when you wait on God. 
I want to be that tree today. That's waiting by the Lord. I want to be that tree today. That's what I want to be. That's my desire, to be like that tree that's waiting, that's going to bring forth his fruit in his season. And, and whatever I put my hand in, it's going to prosper. You know why? Because I patiently waited. I endured. I did what he told me to do when he told me to do it. That's what you want. That's what you want. And nothing less. I wouldn't take anything less than what God has all has got to offer me. And he offers nothing but his best. Back into the hands of the 